you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah for this glorious day. Wow, I'm just so thankful. I'm just so thankful. You know, as I was writing this morning, just just allowing the word to wash over my heart. I am just so thankful. I'm so thankful that I know the word, okay? I'm so thankful that I know God's good view and opinion of me. Oh my goodness, you know, it was just last week that I really realized what Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians. Can you believe this? For so many years, I've been studying the Bible, preaching the gospel, and yet it wasn't until last week when I saw 1 Corinthians 1.17, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be of none effect. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness, but unto us that are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And you know, I'd always interpreted that as, you know, the wisdom of this world being education or those that go and they get all puffed up in their mind with the education. But you know, what he's talking about is the serpent's wisdom. He's talking about the wisdom of the world, which is the wisdom that came into this world through Satan. And you know what? Everybody's on that bandwagon. They're trying to prove who they are through what they do, what they possess, how they look. And God destroyed it in one fell swoop in the cross of Jesus Christ. He crushed the head of the serpent. He did exactly what he promised in Genesis 3.15. He said that the serpent would bruise the Savior's heel, but that the Savior was going to crush his head. And how apropos for him to do it at Golgotha, the place of the skull. You know, that was the very place where David buried the head of Goliath. After he defeated the giant, he took that head back to Jerusalem and he buried it right there and that's why it was called the place of the skull and so here we have the picture of Christ in David defeating Goliath and then Jesus comes along and he fulfills it he crushes the serpent's head hallelujah and you know there is no once you get it I mean You know, people will say, Christians will say, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after this, that walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. They quote it, but they're quoting it in an effort to believe it. No, this has got to be our reality. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh is all that saying is when you know who you are through the gospel uh, the lie has no power over you anymore okay sin and death the old belief system has no power over you anymore Amen. how glorious to know that I mean, I didn't know that. For 34 years as a Christian, I didn't know that. Glory to God. But you know, and we've heard it so many times, and Pastor Rick just preached it a couple of weeks ago, putting on the whole armor of God. And putting on the whole armor of God 
is just to be absolutely dressed in God, what God says about you. We put off, we put off the old man and put on the new man who's created in true righteousness and holiness. This, this man is prepared for us. It's not something we've got to do. It's something we put on. We put on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my righteousness. He is my sanctification. He is my redemption. He is my wisdom. He is who God says I am. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Hey, Sharon. God bless you, my beloved. Yeah, you put up the shield of faith. What is the shield of faith? You're, you're able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. What are these fiery darts of the wicked one? They're accusations that will come against you. You know, you can put up your hand. It's like, this is my shield of faith. It don't work here. It don't work here. No way, because I know who I am. When you know who you are, you cannot be convinced that you're not. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And you know, I mean, last week I preached on the renewal of the mind. And there are some people in grace that were like, well, you know, that's legalism. I don't need to read the Word of God. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. If you never pick up your Bible another day in your life, God, will, His love towards you will never change. Amen. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. But you know what? If we want to go through life victorious, amen, we got to know who we are. <laughs> because otherwise, we are bait for the devil. Amen. He's going around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for someone who's vulnerable, who don't know who they are. Amen. He ain't got a chance against anybody who knows who they are, praise God. You know, I, as I was meditating this morning, as I was riding my bike, I was saying to myself, and I even said it to my husband, I said, condemnation is a killer. Condemnation is a killer. It will, it will thwart you. It will freeze you. It will paralyze you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for saying that, Jim. It'll cause you to suffer. And that completes my thought because God loves us whether we read the Bible or we don't read the Bible. It's not about doing and don't not doing. It's about being educated in who we are. Amen. Amen. You know, we can go through life never reading the Bible, just saying, thank you, Jesus, that you died for me, and we can live life like hell on earth. Because that word hell is the word hadas, and hadas means not to see. You know what? I don't want to go through life blind as a bat. I want to go through life with my eyes wide open. Yes. You know, the Word is constantly talking about uh, coming into the full knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Coming into a great revelation of the love of God. To grow in grace and the love uh, uh, and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ to grow up, to not be like children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. I mean, so many people are so unstable. Somebody comes along with a new doctrine and their role is listening to it. Amen. But when you have the truth, your heart is guarded by the truth and you will not believe the lie. You know, I was, as I was writing this morning, I was thinking about the woman that was caught in the, the act of adultery. And Jesus said, uh, where are your accusers? And she says, no man, Lord. He says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now, if you're carnally minded, 
you would interpret that as Jesus saying, well, I don't condemn you this time, but don't go do it again. That's not what he's saying. What he was saying is, listen, before you met me, you lived under condemnation. You lived under the condemnation that you're not as you ought to be. And you went about trying to prove to yourself that you're lovable. And that's why you did all that you did. Well, I'm giving you the word that will set you free. I don't condemn you. I don't condemn you. This is the master. This is God saying, I don't condemn you. Now go and live in the freedom of that word. No condemnation. I'm accepted. I'm not condemned. The master accepted me. So who cares? Hallelujah. That's true freedom. When you come to know that, glory to God. And that was the word to her, to every one of us. I don't condemn you. Jesus said, the Son of Man came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world may be saved. Whosoever believeth on him shall not enter into condemnation, and he that believeth not is condemned already. You see, the condemnation was already here. Jesus Christ came to set us free from this life of being condemned of knowing ourselves according to the flesh. He says, I've come to set you free. But if you don't listen to what Jesus said, and your heart is not fully persuaded of the value that you are to him, you'll be a sucker for the lie. And I don't want to be nobody's sucker, baby. I just want to believe the truth. Amen. Glory to God. You know, in... Um, Isaiah 54, one of my go-to scriptures. I love it. You know, the scripture says in uh, verse 14 of 54, In righteousness thou shalt be established. You've got to be established in righteousness. And this righteousness is not a works righteousness that you perform. It's a ri the righteousness that you receive. Amen. And it's a gift. Romans 5.17 says that he that receives abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. You are going to reign. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right, Sharon. I don't condemn you, Jesus. Glory to God. To live in that reality is freedom. Amen. Glory to God. And you know, this scripture, when I was in an, another uh, church they used to quote this scripture in verse 17 all the time no weapon formed against me will prosper but they they threw it out there like a talisman or something in a movie where they stick up the cross and, and the demon goes <laughs> okay but there was no guts behind it. There was no understanding behind it. They just said it like it's going to work. But this, this is continuing in, in righteousness you shall be established. You'll be unmovable once you get it. Once you get that you're righteous, not because of what you do, but because of what Jesus did, and you believe it, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue, you see this, this is accusation. This is the accuser of the brethren. Every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. This is the gift of righteousness that God has given unto us. And as I was meditating on that this morning, it says this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. I thought, 
what is that word heritage? And I know it means inheritance, uh, bequeathed, okay? But it also means to occupy, to occupy. And do you know, when I read that, I remember Jesus said, occupy till I come. And then I remembered what Paul said in, in uh, Ephesians 1, in his prayer, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that we may become intimately acquainted with him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We are his inheritance. I mean, we have inherited God. You know, the Lord said to Abram, Abram, I am thy exceeding great reward. Abram inherited God, but God has inherited us. And it's, he's saying, occupy this inheritance. Know who you are. Know who you are. Don't give any place to the devil. I'm his gatekeeper. Amen. Hallelujah. I am going to possess this vessel that God is possessing. And I am going to allow Jesus Christ to defend this property with his word. Amen. That I will be a victor. I will be a victor through Christ who loved me and gave himself for me. And you know, that scripture there, it says, every, every tongue that rises up against you, you will condemn it. Well, listen to this. This is what 2 Corinthians 10 says. This is showing you Isaiah 54, 17 being applied by the saint. It says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Every accusation that comes against you, every word of condemnation that comes against you, you cast it down and you bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. Because you know what? Those thoughts that come against you, those accusations that come against you, it will always point to your behavior. It doesn't point to Christ. It gets you to look at yourself. What does it say? Turn your attention to the obedience of Christ because that's where your righteousness lies. It does not lie in your behavior. It lies in his behavior glory to God hallelujah oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus and you know so many times these accusations it's not that they come from the devil they originally came from the devil the lie came from the devil that's been implanted in people's hearts but it's in our own hearts that have not been washed the scripture says in uh, Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness. You can only get this boldness through knowing who you are. The righteous are as bold as a lion. And this righteousness is a gift. It's not through my performance. Having boldness to enter into the holy, holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us. See, he provided the way through the veil, that is to say his flesh, having a high priest over the house of God. Let us, 
let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance. I'm totally persuaded. I'm clean and holy by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Concentrate on his faithfulness, not your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That's what it's about. That's why I'm always talking about feeding on the word, feeding on the word, because our conscience, our conscience, B.C., is an evil conscience, and that word evil is filled with toil and labor. So our conscience has been educated by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that we are what we do. And that's all got to get washed out, washed out by the word of God so that when the accusation comes, it's like, what? I don't know myself after the flesh. I only know myself according to what Jesus Christ says. Hallelujah. There's no place here for that nonsense. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, kids, I have thoroughly enjoyed sharing the word with you this morning. Go and enjoy. Go and enjoy this glorious day that the Lord has given unto us. Amen. And walk in his wisdom, not the wisdom of this world. Okay, kids. God bless you. Have an awesome day.